the teams that won, they just played their style and it, you know, they were able to just snowball. They seemed like they had complete control of the entire game. So yeah, like you said, I'd like to see them when they're actually under pressure against, you know, some other great teams that play different play styles. And I guess we're going to have to see here in this game, uh, red zone versus RNO. Definitely. And we're going to be looking at the draft. And do you think Cow Cow is going to be banned once again uh, a lot since he does have very strong potential in that early game with that spin? And actually, we're going to find out right now as the draft does actually start. So what are you expecting here, uh, Sean? Well, I don't know. There's a lot of changes to the meta. Um, I feel like Freya is definitely not as strong as she used to be. Uh, I don't see her being banned at all anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like she's well balanced now. Uh, I like to see some of the new heroes like uh, that have been tweaked a little bit, like Murdoch, um, maybe even Bomb Bomb, um, even Grom. Uh, we haven't seen any Grom yesterday. Uh, I think they didn't we... nerf. Oh no, I think it was banned. No, we, no, we never seen Grom. He was always banned. Yeah. Um, even though his his hook uh, is a bit slower and a little bit harder to land, I still feel that he's still he's, he's still, still pretty really strong. Yeah. And uh, we see Cleopatra and Ares being banned out here, and we saw how strong Red Zone was with the Cleo. And uh, that definitely Aries has been abandoned. And we've been stating that Aries is so strong. And it was very surprising for us in the first series of yesterday not to see him. And we actually do see him banned out today. And Una as well as Aiden being banned out on the side of red zone. Which, you know, does make sense. Aiden has probably been one of the strongest uh, AD carries that's been picked so far. Yeah, he's one of those AD carries that you can just outplay anybody with. Um, you can pop that ulti. You can blink to your illusion mid ulti. And if like if you're an ADC that has really good positioning, Aiden is definitely a hero that you'd probably want to play. Yeah, and there's that Cow Cow and uh, Electros both being banned out there. Both both pretty standard bans. We've seen Electros run around, do what he wants on maps. And if you're not able to actually play against that, maybe it is a smart ban, especially if the other team does play it. And uh, we saw Flo from Team RNO go to work yesterday uh, on many dive type heroes, such as I think you played Apollo. Uh, and possibly Wolfram, so he he did uh, really well yesterday, and I'm looking forward to seeing how Flo does again today. Yeah, and also Russell, he he stepped up pretty pretty good yesterday on uh, those ADCs. I believe he played Vince all series, so he's picking uh, Vince once again. Yep, and, and uh, I guess we'll just have to see if he uh, continues his win streak. Definitely, and we, we see Lunaria and Guan Yu being picked up. Both very strong picks. Guan Yu definitely can combo off with Lunaria's um, beam, for sure. Um, being able to stun the target for, you know, approximately one second or so, and Lunaria can just follow it up. So I really like that coming out from them, and they do pick up the Ooh. Apollo that I didn't mention, who's been a very, very strong pick in this meta so far. Yeah, definitely. Also, the Burninator. I, I, is Burninator still a 0% win rate? <laughs> No, I think he did win a game in one of the games yesterday that uh that one of the teams that stomped ended up picking him and they won. So, and I think it was Arno that actually did pick him. But but that being said, Saxo does pick up the Asrath, and we've seen how good Asrath is with Lunaria. If he can land that on two or three people, it's definitely going to be very hurtful for them because Lunario can just combo off with her ultimate. So I'm really liking this coming out from Red Zone. Yeah, definitely, and they also have the Lubu front line, which does really, really well. Uh, they can combo off of Esrath as well. They can land the AoE stun on top of Esrath. So, and there's the Freya pick. Yep. So they're actually gonna run Freya. And so I would like to probably see a Solus instead. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I think it kind of actually plays into the lineup because her javelin is can go through heroes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, when she ults. Um, so I feel like if Esrath does land the ult, she can hit like a multiple people with her spear with Lunaria poking as well. So I feel like they can absolutely just blow someone up. So I kind of like it with the wombo combo type potential, but uh, similar for Solus, I, I could see Solus really working with that combo as well. Um, maybe it's just, he's more comfortable on the hero, but, uh, I know I, I like the pick. I like the pick. Yeah. And, uh, like you said, we saw flow on one of those. Heroes that play super aggressive, and he's gonna pick up another one of those heroes, which is Sun Wukong. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited to see what he does on that hero. For sure. And guys, this is the first game of Red Zone versus RNO. Get hyped because this game is gonna be good. And we see an aggressive play straight come in here. They all TP bottom. 
baiting oh, behind no. there. Ooh, this is smart from RZ. Red Zone jumps in. Lubu with a good initiation there. Onto the Burnator who does try to leap away. Kenpachi dropping very low. Getting drawn on by them. Not, no kills. Able to be secured here. Good escape there from RNO. Not giving them much. Just giving them the buff. I like this. Apollo did, uh, instantly TP's top. I like this early aggression already from Red Zone. Yeah. Apollo can instantly TP top. I think he was trying to secure the buff there, but he realized that he was a little bit too late. He's just going to go to lane. Yeah, definitely. And Flo is going to go into his jungle. We saw him do work on this, uh, on um, the Wukong yesterday. I'm pretty sure he did go the, the Shapeshifter's Axe and was split pushing a lot and just doing so much work for his team. So, hopefully seeing that from him. Yeah, so Red Zone actually going to secure two buffs. Um, Ray with the speed buff. Oh, nice little spear there. Guan Yu actually gonna hop in onto Matt. Oh, Lubu actually goes in under tower. Lance is stunned. Nice little poke oh, there from Nice, Flares. Yeah, wow. nice damage. Definitely. So let's let's talk about the strength of uh of Crystal. We haven't we haven't really mentioned her that much, but her poke is very insane and she does offer a decent amount of CC if she can get onto those backline carries and, and constantly uh hit these hit her hit her spells on the enemy team, which allows for a lot of kiting potential on her team. And they're actually gonna jump here on bottom. Kenpachi does use his escape, trying to get out of there. Can't maybe possibly can't jump out completely. Ooh, good damage there, but not able to secure the kill. Lunaria does rotate as well. Yeah, just talking about Crystal a bit more, I feel like she's just an overall well-rounded hero. She has very good burst potential, and her spells are like, pretty much a, like, she provides really good AoE as well as single target damage, which is why I think she's a top pick. She's also very good at, um, you know, starting fights, allowing to get that slow onto the enemy and allowing your uh, frontliners to actually reach them and, you know, hit those stuns on them, so... Definitely offers a lot of utility to the team. Yeah, and she can also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she hasn't. She can actually AOE CC people. If she lands her AOE Ice uh, Blast, uh, followed up with her ulti, it could actually AOE stun everybody that's in uh, the area of her ult, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Definitely so. not that easy. Yeah, definitely not easy to land, <laughs> but if she does, it's devastating. While we're talking, Dragon is up, so we see these wards start to fade away, and uh, no team really has any players on Dragon, but we do see lots of TPs here. Uh, <laughs> Russell actually does have to fight this s -Rat down there. He was going to cancel his TP, so good play there from Vince. It is a 4v4 for this Dragon if they want to do it, but Flo oh. might go do it himself. We've seen Flo actually Just take the cars now. himself. Yep, Esrath alone in this bottom lane. Can they take this dragon for free? Looks like Lubu is about to go and jump in. He does jump in. Doesn't get the steal. Dragon does go all the way of the of R and O. They're gonna keep this fight going. Good Lenaria blast onto them. Good dive by Matt. Can Matt keep going? Can Pachi try to chase? Not able to chase. Taking a lot of damage from Freya. Esrath actually does miss his dash. Can Pachi does jump onto the back line. All very low, and it just turns out into a one for nothing on Red Zone side. Yeah, you can see these team fights. They're really. They, the players know when to engage and when to disengage. You saw like all those players just make it out barely with their lives. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely a, a pretty even-ish trade, I'd say. Um, but Arno, does, that I think, gets a little bit of upper hand by getting the dragon kill there. Yeah, definitely. These fights are definitely a lot closer than they were yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I really, I'm really enjoying it actually, because you just see so many L plays. We see this Burnator jumping in, jumping out. Matt jumping in, jumping out. Guan Yu does jump in, then gets out because he knows he can't go any further. And uh, yesterday's game, we saw a lot of people jumping in and you know not knowing to get out. Sorry, part of my word cycle is getting on in the mid lane here and gets absolutely brutalized by this Lunaria. Yeah, the snipe damage is just unreal. She's gonna rotate to the bot lane, just soak yeah, up this experience. Stop. Trying to go in on top, good counter initiation by Kenpachi, but... Or not counter initiation, sorry, follow up. They are gonna get this top tower though, they they try to rotate mid to get us kill after uh, Psycho does fall in that mid lane, but... Pretty simple tower going on the favor of our red zone, who's starting to uh, yeah. take the gold lead now. Yeah, and Esrath, he's split pushing bottom, he's gonna do so much damage on this tower, there's no TPs. There's the ulti though by Wukong, nice little stun there. Yeah, I think he just used it to all defend. To, uh, yeah. But it could be it's the downfall if they do fight very shortly, because he's not going to be able to get to the fight as, you know, he usually does. Yeah, you really don't want to use that all to defend, you want to really use it to blow up one of the carries when you have the opportunity, but... 
Definitely. Now looking at the, the builds, I think Burninator and Apollo will be going that more tanky type builds, which uh, I like to see coming up from them. And we see uh, Flo going, you know, more of an assassin oriented build with that mask, which uh, I like to see from Mukongs. We're gonna push mid here. Yeah, they are rotating to the bot side now. Burninator, he might actually get pinched out here, but it, he's getting support from his teammates. Yeah. Matt it is might look to go in. Three here, though. Yeah, they gotta be careful. Very careful. Gonna jump onto the crystal here in the mid. Does get ulti by that trap. Does get killed. Apollo trying to follow up. Good pushback by Ben, but Ben gets ulti by Wukong. Good kill there from him. They're gonna dive here. Possibly not Lunari. Does come in. Good ulti onto Ryder. Ryder does end up falling. That's from dropping low. And Arno Matt trying to dive in. Does good some does do some good damage. They are diving pretty far here. Vince trying to fight this Freya 1v1. Not able to. Good kills there from Arno. They take a tower as well. Swinging the gold lead in their favor. Yeah, really good read by Flo. He saw that uh, the Lubu is really low as well as all three right it's beside. Great ult. Yeah, he ulted and stunned three of them there and Matt followed up with a nice slide in there. And Lunaria kind of just kill. gets caught out position as well there and they get uh, blown up. Yeah, and I think Esrath actually ulted but it got cancelled out by uh, someone CC there. Yeah, he didn't get the whole animation off. Might have been Burnator. Really well played by Arno there. Great team fight for them. Definitely Securing gonna go in the bottom lane well. too. Ben dropping very low. Good pick off there. They're gonna try to pressure this tower as well. Smart. The good good play here from Red Zone though. Gonna try to take that dragon. Can be contested by the two though, and the, all of them are gonna rotate actually. Let's try to help this. Burnator does go away and dragon gets stolen by oh. Burnator. Good play there by Kenpachi. Wow. He needed that dragon. They're just falling behind now. 7k. RNO just just making a huge swing, a huge comeback. Yeah, I'm taking a 9k gold lead right now, so definitely very, very working very well together. And um, they are one to one in towers. Two dragons do go in yeah. favor of RNO, though. It's just giving them that huge gold lead. Uh, definitely up 7k. But it, it did seem at the start of the game that red zone was a little bit more in control. They were always invading their jungle, looking for picks around the map. Now it looks like R and O. Yeah, TP's coming aggressive. in, but Freya might actually. Ooh, I think Freya could have taken that tower down with a couple more right clicks. Flo does take down that top tower. There's gonna be a fight here. Kenpachi is getting gone on a good off look by Asrap. Not able to blow them up. Wukong does reinitiate onto Saxo. Saxo dropping very low. Apollo on 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 top of him. Ben on this backline as well, trying to back off. He's gonna jump in, does do a good job. Freya does an ultimate damage to Psycho. Good damage there. Ben does drop to Flo. Flo trying to actually fight. Matt doing a lot of work as well in that backline onto the Freya and Lubu. Good play there from Arno. Wow. It looked like it was going for the way of red zone that entire fight. Freya was just melting everybody in the backline, but Matt stepping it up right there. Doing yeah. so much work. Him and Flo definitely doing some good jobs there. And look at Flo doing what he did last game with the shapeshifters axe. Actually taking his car by himself. And I really like this coming out from Flo. Good play by him. Yeah, and it is going to hit the nine minute mark. So they're actually going to have super creeps coming into Power Powered troops game. deployed. Yep. Yeah, definitely great plays there, and this Apollo is just doing so much work this game. Props to Matt and uh, Flo, who are just keeping their team in this game with these counter initiations and, you know, making these team fights go in their favor. Psycho definitely having a bit of a struggle to 0-3 uh, on the crystal. Yeah, he's, he's getting pretty much gone on the entire time, and because Crystal lacks a lot of mobility, she has a hard time escaping um, from all of the, the front line of red zone. Lubu just Lubu and Guan Yu just dive right onto her and there's not really much she can do. She just tries to drop down all of her spells before she she dies. Yeah, definitely and uh sucks or Flo is gonna TP down here. Yeah, it does so much damage on the Ezraf. Ezraf couldn't do anything. That damage from Flo, just unbelievable. He's gonna start slip pushing. He does have his ultimate up if he does wanna go in and gank when they do dive this tower.
yeah, we'll probably see him start rotating uh, near the mid lane just in case Wukong is ulti in for this fight here. Yeah, it's gonna be a good free tower for Wukong too if they do not stop his split push. Which is gonna be good. Lunar is gonna try to go and stop it. Does actually miss her ability to clear those yeah, waves and they do have he mega does go creeps. back on the tower. Good poke. Crystal does use her ulti to push him off. Good damage from that ulti from Lunaria. One to two, but they actually don't initiate. So two towers now going in favor of Arno, who are starting to lead by a significant amount now. 15k up. Gonna jump on Flow. They do catch Flow out. Flow trying to run. Does use a CC immune, but can't get out completely. Does end up dropping. Good pick off there from Red Zone. Saw the rotations and knew what happened. Estrath actually does jump in. Good ulti onto Russell. Russell trying to kite him. Does kite him. Saxo dropping very low. They cannot get the kill. Matt trying to tr starting to get it going on. Kunpachi trying to get out of there, but he's not able to. Good ulti from Lunaria onto two. Chasing Matt now. Matt dropping low. Freya doing so much damage onto this back line. And Matt now getting caught out. Matt will die as well. So that's a three kills going in favor of Red Zone. Trying to swing the tides here a little bit. Yeah, that was the fight that they really needed. Now Dragon spawning. I'd like to see Red Zone try and make a player and take Dragon. Yeah, they need to get some type of gold in their favor. Oh, they might actually catch Crystal in the mid lane. Guan Yu actually jumps in, stuns him. Lunaria snipe, is it up? It is! Oh! And she actually does hit it right here! Making a the plays this snipe. game! He's had a couple of wonderful ults this game. 4-1-3, and 15.4k net worth on his team. Doing a lot of work, Ryder. Hands up to him. And not hands up, props to him. Because my hands are definitely up. Because I feel like Ryder is robbing the store right now. <laughs> <laughs> and aka robbing this game is what I meant by that. Definitely big gold swing. Uh, only 9k or 8k. 9k, but uh, yeah, it was definitely a lot bigger uh, gold lead before that fight happened. They yeah, only Dragon. 10k, it was around 15. They were able 15. to take a nice fight, mm -hmm. yeah. So definitely trying to swing the tides. It's these towers that the enemy team has that's allowing them to have that huge gold lead. It's 6 to 2 towers, so if they were to get pick up a couple more towers, it could definitely lead to something. Today seems like it's going to be a good day, Sean. This game already lasting longer than a majority of the games yesterday. Yeah, definitely. He's, this game is so back and forth. It, like, Red Zone having the start. Uh, they're really aggressive. Arno making a big comeback in the mid game. And it looks like now, Red Zone Try to going come back, back in together. The game. Yeah. You gotta be careful though. Wukong is top, but SRF is actually gonna initiate on the crystal. Blows her up. Gurnator going in in the center there. Matt is in a lot of trouble. RZ Bennett and Freya doing good kiting. She's kiting. She's doing so much damage in the back line. Guan Yu is in a lot of trouble. Vince might actually secure the kill there. Freya, she has to back off in the top lane. That Wukong They're gonna try and put hits on three here. once again. Only one down though, one down for both teams. They are gonna initiate Ezra does go and Luhu does find a good ulti. Freya trying to do some good damage. She is doing a lot of good damage to Flo. She's gonna try to go in. So is Luhu or Guan Yu, sorry, he's going in as well. They do back off with the stun, get the kill onto oh. Vince, but they're gonna chase and I feel like they should chase here. No, Ray is gonna just go to that top lane and start clearing waves back and forth. Now it's a three for two in that whole total skirmish. Yeah, these fights are all over the place. It's just so insane. And Zakar is going to spawn in a minute. And I feel like Red Zone, they really have to contest this next car. Yeah, they really do. If they get these minions, these buffed minions against them, it's going to be very hard to hold their uh, base turret. So they need to contest this. I feel like that is the play. They should not give it up. Uh, ben and Saxo are starting to spawn now as well. Yeah, if they don't contest this Zakar, I feel like... It's just going to be a slow and painful death for Z for Red Zone here. All three of their base turrets are quarter health gone already. Definitely, and they are aware of this. They do put a place award in there. I like this from Red Zone. Starting to get a little bit aggressive, thinking, uh, doing the right style of thinking. Poking at Kenpachi right now. It does heal it all back up, though. That last fight, again, Flo letting a 2 to 3 man ulti there onto that back line. He did so much work actually bringing down Ryder and uh, doing lots of damage to Freya, who actually did get out alive.
red zone just doing a good job of staying back and just waiting for for Arno to try and go take the Sakara. Oh, it looks like Flo's gonna sneak it. We've seen him do this a lot, and Lubu actually reads it because there's a ward in the pit. Lubu's gonna actually go in. Freya in a lot of trouble. Matt, he's sliding into the center. Lubu, he didn't drive onto the back line. Right, in a lot of trouble, he does fall. And good kiting from Vince as well. Burnator, he's in there. Juan Yu, gonna fall. And it looks like Arno is gonna take this fight. That's a four or five man wipe shot and Arno are gonna push for this game winning push. Good play there by Flo, getting the buff for his team, coming in late into the fight. SRAF landed a huge hole, but this game does go in favor of RNO. Game one. Victory. What a nice game. Nice little bait there from Flo. He just went and started Zakar. Uh, and Lubu instantly went in, and I think he went in a little bit too early without his team. Flo instantly reacted. Uh, used his ult on the mid lane, instantly blow, blew up Ryder, took him straight out of the fight. And I don't even think Ryder used his snipe to get any of that snipe damage off. It was just so well played. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about know. actually how good the Sun Wukong was this game. And you and me have talked about the way we want Sun Wukongs to build. And I think this was even during another tournament. You mentioned Wukong needs to build that shape of Shifter's Axe. It does so much work for him as he has so many or he, as he can create illusion already. And we've seen Flo do it consistently this tournament compared to any other Wukong. And definitely showing that he might be one of the best Wukongs right now, performing at a high level. Yeah, definitely. We've seen a lot of Wukongs build uh, Nignio's Blade instead of the Shapeshifters. But although the, the mana drain is really nice to have uh, on yourself as well as your illusions, I feel like the Shapeshifters just provide so much more. You can take objectives by yourself, you can solo as a car, you can take towers, you can you know use your illusions to soak damage and dive and just make these big plays. And I think Flo... He really understands the hero really yeah, well. And it allows you to to make the you know ten, make the enemy kind of distracted, not knowing which one's which. So when you do dive in, you, you pop your illusions all ripping onto one person. How do they save the one person if they don't know who the real one is? So really liking that build out from Flow and just all around R and O playing fantastic and props to Red Zone. They did play very well, almost bringing this game back in their favor. Yeah, although uh Freya got, got nerfed there, I feel like Ray played it extremely well. Um, he was outputting so much damage. I think both ADCs this game had really well uh, positioning. Ray really knew when to go into the back line, when to be super aggressive and land those spears. And Russell, he was doing some great kiting against the tanks the entire game, staying alive. He only had two or one death there that yeah. game. Definitely, and if we look actually at the damage charts, we see Ryder up there leading the whole game with almost 27,000 hero damage. So definitely almost putting the team on his back on the side of red zone. But other than that, guys, that is the end of Game 1. We'll be back as soon as possible for Game 2. It could be a wait of 10 to 15 minutes, depending on if the players will be ready. Other than that, guys, please stick around. We'll be back shortly.